You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Did you know that 68% of brand content created is never used? Which means all that time and money spent creating custom videos, documents, and ad creative goes down the drain. But not with Brandfolder. Brandfolder keeps brand assets up to date and in use, allowing you to scale your marketing efforts more effectively. The result is greater creative impact, faster speed to market, and optimized collaboration across internal and external teams worldwide. Do your brand a favor with Brandfolder. Learn more at brandfolder.com. Hello, I am Eric Tillman, and I'm the Chief Intelligence Officer at N2K Networks. When I was a kid, I wanted to be um, the usual astronaut, um, space, uh, you know, alien and, uh, you know, traveler. I eventually uh, settled on being an artist. I had some people in my life that... um, thought that perhaps I might want to rethink being a starving artist as a career choice. And um, what I ended up doing was combining my love of technology, which came from being in the 80s and growing up with the promise of the future of video games and all of what we were promised in terms of jetpacks and flying cars uh, and computer uh, animation uh, turned into my... um, you know, my effort to merge my interests in creation of uh, three-dimensional visual art with something that was kind of techy, And uh, that is how I came to be in a intelligence career um, rather than being a starving artist or a 3D computer animator. Taking Chinese in the Navy um, is a pretty significant endeavor uh, from a training perspective. To learn any language from nothing to fluency is something that um, definitely takes a long time, even if you're not somebody who's already pretty skilled at learning new languages and incorporating them you know, in your brain. The course length uh, for languages uh, like that is about 63 weeks at the language school in Monterey. Then at the time, and they don't do this anymore, but at the time they sent uh, us linguists to a secondary a technical school in Texas for another six months. So they mandated that people who were going to take these languages had to then extend their initial contract up to six years. So I extended my um Initial tour to six years and uh, went to Hawaii. And I worked for a um, an entity, naval security group, at one point, working on a midnight shift um, in this facility. Uh, someone walked downstairs into our section and on that entire floor, and this was a Navy senior chief uh, looking for people to volunteer to go ride submarines. And then he got about three people down. And I looked around me uh, during my, you know, midnight shift in a facility under the ground and said, wait a minute. I actually do think that I I might want to try this. So thus began my next phase of, uh, of time in the Navy. So as the 10 year mark, um, during active duty approached, I started to ask myself the questions that probably everybody else in a similar situation ever asked themselves. Uh, And that is, am I going to stick this out for 20 years and retire? Uh, Or am I going to find something else to do that is meaningful to me personally and maybe takes advantage of the 10 years that I have spent in um, already? That's why I ended up leaving uh, at the end of the day, not because I disliked the Navy. I really enjoyed it. Met some of the most incredible people uh, in my career during that time. Met my wife uh, and uh, absolutely uh, adored the the work that I did. But I thought I could do something bigger. So I left and um, moved to the Washington, D.C. area and started working 
um, as a defense contractor for Booz Allen Hamilton, um, supporting uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency uh, and their Office of Cyber Threat Analysis. That's where I began doing strategic intelligence analysis uh, there. And I was there for five or six years. I supported some counterintelligence missions. I supported um, uh, some more operational uh, uh, things as well. But um, it was eye-opening and it was um, a wonderful, wonderful experience for me uh, to be able to hone my own existing craft as an intelligence analyst. That is also where I met Simone Petrella, who is the president uh, here at N2K Networks. I ended up leaving um, Booz Allen Hamilton to go join Lockheed Martin, supporting the, the Department of Defense's Cybercrime Center. I worked another sort of counterintelligence and law enforcement support uh, mission uh, using language, but also using cyber uh, operational skills. I worked there for... Uh, six years almost, and then um, we were getting close to the pandemic. And uh, when the pandemic hit, um, I was trying to make a decision about whether or not to stay with government or to, again, go where the action is and work in private industry. And that's what I ended up doing. So I left um, that contract with uh, Lockheed Martin and left uh, the uh, DC-3, uh, to go work at Okta. I worked there as a principal threat researcher uh, for about three years. And it was really, again, eye-opening for me to be a part of some of those um, discussions and some of those groups where people were struggling with these uh, questions of how to navigate legal restrictions in sharing information as well as the need to share in order to be better protected and to protect yourself and to protect others. And I think, you know, that's kind of what led me to N2K because that is one of the things that we do here is find ways to share information, to share knowledge, to find um, common ground that is pertinent and relevant to our listeners and our readers and our learners, no matter where they are no matter who they are, what part of an organization they might be uh, uh, sitting in, um, the content that we offer is relevant to all of them. I think one thing to remember is that this industry is, there is something for everyone here. It doesn't matter where you came from, whether you are a computer science student and you've been researching um, hacker techniques, you know, for as long as you can remember, or you were an art student and you had not a shred of, um, you know, technical ability or um, even you, you never even thought that this might be a way that you might uh, go. I came to this from understanding the nature, the relationships between uh, writer and reader, uh, and understanding how to move information that w from place to place that was useful to who was uh, consuming it. But that's not how everyone gets into cyber. A lot of people get here from a very technical background, and um, it really almost doesn't matter um, where you came from. There is something in cybersecurity that takes advantage of the skills that you bring to the table. And um, e either way, it, it, there's plenty of room here for everyone. My hope is that if I'm not there anymore, um, that people will say, ah, I'm glad that he helped set things up the way that they are now. Um, and that they have the tools to do that again if needed, right? So that um, even if I'm not the one driving it, if change is needed, if organizational change is needed, if workflows need to be adjusted, people will feel comfortable doing that because they know that it's coming from a place of um, enriching those relationships and making everything work better. 